All right, guys. So I got a really interesting video for you guys today. Um, so this check engine light's been coming on, on and off. On my friend's 2011 Volkswagen Jetta. You can see it right there. And what I want to show you guys today is uh, what it's doing, some of the symptoms that the car is experiencing while driving. So bear with me here as I get through this neighborhood area. So I'm here on idle, um, and I'm in park, and it's idling kind of rough. And it's shaking as it's kind of going through the gears. There's a little bit of vibration. And it gets really bad when you step on the gas, when you get up to more of a uh, cruising speed. There, it's shaking right there. You can probably hear it. Oh, you can see the check engine light flashing on and off. It's still vibrating here. We're at about 1200 RPM, 30 miles an hour is when it really vibrates and shakes. Okay, I got the gas pedal down about halfway and it's vibrating. I don't know if you guys can hear the vibration. Yeah, okay, so now the EPC light came on. Okay, that's kind of expected here. Now watch when we make this turn right here at this intersection, it's vibrating, I'm just uh, giving gas. Shaking, I'm giving gas, not doing anything. Just vibrating the hell out of the car. All right, so we're gonna go back to the garage and put the scan tool on the car and see what's going on. So if you guys have this type of drivability issue, hope you guys will stick around to find out what's going on. Okay. All right, so here we are back at our garage. All right, so now that we got the uh, scan tool set up with my tablet here, I can show you guys on a bigger screen what is going on with the check engine code. So uh, again, we're using the Innova 5610 and this person with their phone or tablet pretty easily. I came back with uh, nine different codes, but what I can tell you that is that these codes are just redundant, so keep that in mind. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and drill down into this code. Results, here we go. And you can see all these different codes right here. Um, that tells you basically, it looks like cylinder four misfire, random misfire, uh, misfire cylinder number two, detected, and so forth. And these are all, uh, let's see, 304, 302 cylinder, 300 is random. So number two and number four is the problem child, but this is what's really cool. Okay, so let's go up here to uh, show detail. And it says here that this is, this is a medium severity Okay, and this is what's really cool. Ready? All right, so most likely fix, reinstall intake air duct. So what's funny is that I replaced the, it's trying to focus here, I replaced the, uh, the air, uh, the, the vacuum pump uh, yesterday, and it looks like maybe the air intake hose I didn't put on, you know, nice and snug. So I'm gonna recheck that and we're gonna take it for another test drive. So hopefully that's all it is and not have to fix all these uh, other codes. So, all right, so let's go ahead and remove some of these uh, hoses. So that was removed yesterday along with this. Let me go ahead and take the whole upper cover off because on these Volkswagens, they're all connected, which I really hate. Just to take the freaking cover off, you gotta take this whole air duct off. That's what I'm trying to say here. This thing pops up, this thing pops up. Okay, now, I've gotta remove this guy right here. Okay, and this thing comes out. Okay, so there are two hoses down here that connects to the throttle body. So I have a feeling that the bottom hose right here, there's one right here and a smaller one right here where my middle finger is. I probably didn't get that on there very good because it's really hard to get to. So let me just go ahead and 
Um, well, I don't need to remove that. Let me just remove this guy here. And let me, again, this, this is so tight in here. It's very difficult to get on. All right, so uh, this is what I took apart yesterday to replace the vacuum pump. And what I have a suspicious about here is that I think this bottom hose uh, wasn't on this intake very good. So I'm going to follow the Innova 5610 instructions and just basically just double check these hoses right here, make sure I got it connected really well. But also while I'm in here, I'm going to just double check, make sure all whatever hoses that might have come undone, uh, make sure everything is, looks, you know, looks appropriate and looks correct. And it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this smaller one on first because this is really hard to get to. Okay, that looks and feels good. Okay, and then get this guy on there. That's solid. Okay. Okay, good. Get the cover back on. Okay, make sure that upper intake hose is on there good. Okay, there we go. So let's go take this for another test drive. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and try and delete these codes out of here. I'm not sure if it will. These are generally permanent codes, especially the misfire. So let's see what this scan tool says here. Yeah, okay, so, that, so that's fine. Okay, so the check engine light is off right now. Okay, let's go take it for a quick test drive. Oh, I just turned on the AC. Oh, oh, boy, it's really struggling right now. It, uh, it's vibrating so bad. Okay, something is still not right. Still not right. Okay, we're going to turn it off and do a little bit more diagnosing. All right, guys, so obviously replacing and reconnecting the air intake uh, per the Innova 5610 it didn't work out. So I ended up uh, buying new coil packs and we're going to install the new coil packs for cylinder two and four and let's see how that goes. So first, let's go ahead and put the spark plugs back in here. I took all the spark plugs out and all the coil packs out just to inspect it, uh, make sure there's, you know, they look okay. And it's really hard to tell without a special machine to see exactly which coil pack is, is you know, is gone bad. So if you guys are watching this video, you have a good way of checking to see what coil packs are, are, are dead uh, for DIYers. Please share here in the description or in the comments.
Okay, coil pack number two and number four. And here's number one, number three, and number five. Oops, actually, I gotta pull these back out. I forgot that with these coil packs and the electrical bank, you need to have these kind of loose um, pulled out to get the electrical wiring connectors started. Like so. Okay, so now we'll click them all in. Okay, make sure they're all lined up. And you can push it down. Okay. And just double check, make sure it's all down and they're really good. All right, so this is the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and fire this baby up. So before, when I started the engine, it would splutter between 1000 RPM to about 2200 RPM accelerating it's really hot in here look at that oh it's idling so much better already let me give a little gas now so let's I'm gonna do it slowly oh yeah very smooth very smooth see that and the check engine light is out so sometimes you guys uh, you know, you can look at your computer um, and diagnostics and, and do what it says, and that's exactly what we did. And, and maybe that hose was loose on the air intake box, so we made sure that that air, the hose was under tight and just secured it, um, double checked. But sometimes you got to use your intuition and know that, you know, when, these, when you get these uh, P0300 codes, those are the misfire codes, you got to go with your gut instinct and use your mechanical uh, knowledge and say yeah these this is you know these are misfire issues and oftentimes misfires can be corrected with spark plugs and coil packs not all situations but in most scenarios so we're gonna take it for a test drive and see how it all works out so we'll be right back okay so i just shifted in reverse and it's idling really nice right now. There's no vibrations, there's no stuttering. Okay, we're gonna go pick up my kid at school. Oh yeah. Oh, so much smoother accelerations. Perfect. Awesome. All right, so I can pretty much say with confidence that we have fixed this misfire issue. It's idling very nicely, accelerates smoothly now. All right, so hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you have any thoughts, other thoughts and comments, leave it down below and stay tuned for the next video. And by the way, I'm gonna leave a, um, a card up here in the, up in the corner here so you guys can check out another video I did on the Volkswagen, how replacing the vacuum pumps if you guys are having a major oil leak and, um, and it's coming from the top of the engine where you might see a puddle on top of your transmission and there's a lot of oil on the bottom of your like a transmission pan or on the oil pan and it's just spread throughout like cancer. Uh, it may not be what you think it is. 
Um, so check out this video and if, if you guys are having that issue.